very good morning to all of you we are at the end of this refresher workshop and what i am going to share with you is a little bit about your homework between now and part 2 of refresher 1 so we'll try to do that basically the whole idea is for us to develop ourselves to develop as a team as a family and participate in the society for harmony in the societal systems in the social systems and since you are participating uh, as teachers in the education system that is one of the highest kind of contributions that you can do uh, for any human society so if you look at self development essentially it boils down to understanding harmony and living in harmony at all levels of being the four levels that have been discussed the individual family society nature and existence so this was discussed uh, in the introductory workshop also and this work needs to continue so the first thing to be done is self exploration to discover your natural acceptance to discover your true self uh, in hindi it is swatva to discover your um, true what you really want to be your intention and you can do that uh, it can be facilitated by verifying the proposals on your own right so whenever you are asking these questions you want to be happy you want to be prosperous you want to live in relationship you want to keep your body healthy etc those answers are coming from your deep within your natural acceptance so the first step here is to verify this proposals on your own right on the basis of your natural acceptance and then validate them in living so it will lead to right understanding feeling and thought of harmony and harmonious behavior work and participation in the larger order so that is one part the second part is to purify what you are to purify your sanskar to purify your desire thought and expectation to have your imagination which is in line with your natural acceptance so that is the second part and in that there are two aspects one is to be aware of whatever is going on in your imagination all the time uh, written over here every moment so if you know what is going on in your imagination then you can evaluate it you can find out whether it is in line with your natural acceptance or not in line with your natural acceptance so this work has to be uh, done for self development so in your daily routine if you are able to find place for uh, you know some self reflection some self exploration it would be very helpful in addition to that the weekly meeting uh, can be helpful volunteering can be helpful participating in a workshop uh, uh, you know periodically 6 to 12 months apart that would be helpful and there are these different workshops that are there the introductory workshop the refresher one and two so all those workshops are there other higher level workshops are there so you can participate in that but don't wait for these workshops if you are doing your self exploration all the time along with whatever you are doing otherwise that would be very helpful so as we started this uh, refresher 1 fdp we have done part 1 of it 
uh, and part one is to help to look at the content of UHV1, which is the content of the student induction program UHV module, right? And the expectation from this UHV module, uh, these five expectations which we discussed uh, at the beginning also. So are you able to see this, that I have a basic aspiration as a human being? And to fulfill that aspiration, right understanding is necessary. So if you are able to see this, then you'll be able to share it with your students also. Point number two is that there are some problems in my life and I want to get rid of them. And to resolve these problems, right understanding is required. And this right understanding word we have used many times, it has simply to do with understanding of harmony, the understanding of the existential laws, which are related to both material as well as consciousness. So understanding of harmony is what is required to fulfill our aspirations and also to resolve our problems. Fourth point is, uh, sorry, third point is that there is a definite reality to be understood. It's not an infinite set of things. I have to understand a few things. I have to understand myself to start with. And then the other three things, the family, the society, the nature and existence. So that's all that is to be understood. And fourth point is just a repetition sort of, of one and two that I have a real need to understand. And the important point here is I can understand. I have the capacity to understand. I have the capacity to see what is there to be seen. And interestingly, I feel happy when I understand. At least I can find out that I feel unhappy when I'm confused. So that is the fourth point. And that I'm looking forward to the higher level course like UHV2 and other courses so that I can explore what needs to be understood uh, more deeply. So this is what we were expecting from uh, the UHV1 module. And this uh, workshop was to help you to be able to reinforce this for yourself and then be able to share it with the students. When you conduct the SIP, you are going to conduct the UHV1 session, one or more sessions you are going to conduct in the student induction program. Uh, you are going to check the assignments, help the students to explore. You are going to help them to reach to their own conclusions. So whatever you are going to place is going to be as a proposal rather than as a statement. Uh, help them to explore that. Then you are going to be one of the faculty mentors for a group of 20 students, preferably a mixed group, mixed meaning from different, different departments, from different, different regions of the country. So uh, a mixed group of students so that they can interact uh, across the boundaries that they may be having. And the fourth point here is the assignment of a student buddy to each group of five students. So you are going to help in that assignment. So finding uh, students who can act as older siblings for groups of five students. So this is one set of things that you will be involved in. You must conduct the post-workshop survey for UHV1. There is a survey that um, is there in the material and you must conduct it. You can use a Google form for it. That would be best. Also, you must conduct a post SIP survey. So did the students appreciate the need for UHV1? Uh, were they able to grasp something from the student induction program? So all those kind of things will come in these two surveys. 
and there may be other surveys that you run, but these are important surveys to, to run. This will also act as a record for AICTE that indeed the SIP has been conducted in your college. You must also then, uh, the third set of things is analyze the surveys and draw some conclusions from these, uh, from these surveys and submit the survey data and conclusions to AICT with your report. Your report meaning not necessarily your individual report, but the report of the college. Okay. And the last point there is that the surveys are used as a formal record of participation and conduct of UHV1 and SIP. Without these surveys uh, in detail being shared, uh, it is nice that you know people say that we have conducted the SIP, but this is necessary for record keeping. Now, between um, this uh, uh, part, part one and part two, uh, you must go through this uh, assignment, the uh, post-workshop assignment, so that you are ready for part two. One is your self-evaluation, which you are going to do today in both formats. One is in the written format, and some of you will be able to share verbally also. So that is part one. Part two is uh, complete the reading assignments, video observations that were given as desirable requirements for part one. So all the things that were shared for part one uh, if you have not completed them already, then you can complete them. Uh, second thing is conduct all the UHV1 sessions for uh, SIP or ESIP with at least one batch of students. Um, if you can conduct for more than one batch, that is even better. So you have, if you have SIP running uh, in your college, then you must conduct this with at least one batch. Or if you don't have an SIP running, then you find uh, a group of students with whom you can conduct this SIP. After all, it's only you know short one for 15 sessions, so you can conduct it. Um, then note down your self-observations about how you conducted the UHV1 module. And if possible, you can take help of colleagues to note down and share uh, the observations about your session, how you went through it, all the points that we shared during how to share values. Then, of course, you must conduct the UHP module with the pre-workshop and post-workshop and all that and do the analysis uh, for even the assignment. You will need to enter your observations in the pre-workshop survey when you come for part two of Refresher 1. So that's it from my side. Um, I'm sure that if you have any questions, we are going to run a, um, a session um, later on this month. Uh, you please participate in that session also. Uh, you are welcome to participate in that. Uh we have uh, already gone through uh, the specific steps to be undertaken immediately after this UHV uh, refresher one before coming to refresher two. I'll just share with you or just revise those broad outline of uh, this whole effort, uh, which we discussed in the inaugural session also. And uh, I'll just revise it. Uh, for uh, your next uh, self-evaluation purpose also, so that while going through that self-evaluation session, uh, you can be careful about, the, you can be conscious about those things which we uh, discussed in the starting session. We discussed that this, we are trying for holistic value-based education. And this is important because it is education and sanskar which is responsible for humane world vision in any person. And on the basis of 
that human world vision we have our own values within ourselves we find what is valuable for us and what is not valuable for us and on the basis of values we try to learn those skills so that we can live as per human conduct and all these things are necessary so that we become competent to be part of a human society human culture and human civilization we are able to contribute towards that society culture and civilization now for this purpose in order to prepare our students accordingly we have three type of efforts and these are there in those modules of our sip the first and the foremost effort is of universal human values guided by three four principles that these are universal rational verifiable and leading to harmony and it has been time tested in education at national level for last so many years and then discussing with the students regarding case studies of human thought for example our own indian knowledge system these are the efforts for human culture over thousands of years people have gone through these systems and to discuss various aspects of our own uh, surrounding and our own traditions and after this the third step is the value guided skill education that means the skills which are nature friendly and human friendly now this is not to be done only at the level of individual but from individual to family family to village block city district state nation then only we will have a just and equitable society which is the aspiration of national education policy and that will lead to a developed nation which means nation which is harmonious within itself and which can support other nations to be harmonious that means that can be complementary to other nations so this is the whole background which i am sharing it in one uh, slide the next is role of universal human values in holistic value based education uhv fills the crucial missing link of value education which is missing at present in our mainstream education it provides the holistic world view it provides the base and details for a human knowledge system a target or end point or a criteria for evaluating a knowledge system because without any framework we can't evaluate any knowledge system whether it is in our family tradition or in our systems of our schools and colleges or something coming from other countries towards us through tv through newspapers through media social media google etc etc it provides a guideline for skill education which skills are to be learned by me the guidelines are nature friendly and human friendly now when we talk about these things then our scope becomes uh large where we have four different aspects one is the behavior aspect behavior for mutual fulfillment teamwork and collaboration i am good i am i understand everything i try to live by all those values but i don't care for others so that means that is not useful that is not the purpose of this whole value education we have to live together and that is the first part of it the behavior for mutual fulfillment teamwork and collaboration then we come to science and technology management for mutual prosperity when we try to uh, deal with the nature when we try to interact with the nature when we work with the nature so this is for mutual prosperity and then there is a third aspect also this is the aspect of service that is seva which promotes harmony in family in society to know about the responsibilities within ourselves towards whosoever is around us 
in our family or in society then the food last but not the least is the meaningful participation in family neighborhood institution workplace community etc all the way to the nation and beyond so the whole world is in harmony the whole universe is in harmony we have to learn how to participate in this whole world as part of that harmonious process so for this purpose possible steps at each university and college at university level one is to develop a uhv cell at university level assign a university uhv coordinator orient 100% university policy makers management faculty staff through three day or five day online uhv fgd me include uhv2 as pre credit course in academic curriculum in the university at present in about it please uh, we have this course uh, wherever you are you have to try for this activity in at the university level with the help of your team members and at the level of college level we must have a uhv cell in each college assign a uhv coordinator at each every college prepare faculty members one is to 20 at least that means for every 20 new students we must have one faculty member who is trained in 3 day or 5 day online uhv fdp number 3 is prepare faculty for teaching uhv 1 that means for every 60 students in the college we must have one trained teacher who has been trained in 8 day uhv fdp or who has been trained in part 1 of 10 day online uhv fdp then prepare faculty member for teaching uhv 1 for that purpose we should have this is for teaching uhv2 i think where for every 120 students we must have one teacher who has done eight day uhv fdp or part 1 and 2 of 10 day online uhv conduct uhv based sip at every college student in action program must be done at every college faculty mentorship 1 is to 20 for all semesters weekly meeting we have to follow up with the weekly meetings to have successful results student body 1 is to 5 for all semesters so weekly meeting of all the student body so there is a question what is student body as rajul ji explained that for every 5 students we assign one mature student or a senior student who is uh, having little more leadership kind of aptitude so who can uh, take them together in every group there is a group leader the student body means one leader among the students themselves so teach uhv2 in third and fourth semester or earlier in every college so this is the expectation from all our trained teachers that have in every college one by one involving our hods principals policy makers other people in management we try to grow things in this direction so this is uh, actually in line with our targets in the society ensuring holistic value based education it's a major task in which all of us are the key you are also key to that whole major task so we know that we have 131 crore people in our country and we need to have at least one elderly person in every family we have about 25 crore families having this population of 131 crore people and we have to go reach them as parents or elders through informal education so in order to have large number of 
elderly people or parents in the society we need to reach them through informal education which is possible if we cover the whole school education system we have 26 crore children in 15 lakh schools in every school for 240 students we need to have one teacher so we must have this number of trained teachers in our schools now these teachers come from higher education and today we have 4 crore youth who are studying in about 39000 colleges and we need to have at least one faculty member who is trained in this uhv content for every 20 newly students joining the college or about one faculty member for every 80 to 100 students overall so we can calculate the number of teachers who are required to cover the whole nation as far as higher education is concerned so it's a major task it is huge but it is possible we can have the responsibility we can achieve it collectively